Hello, hello, everybody. So fun to see you all coming on. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Thursday morning? I love that you're all here. So fun. All right, let's get started. So we're just going to dive right into the workshop. And um, I have so much to share. I have so much to um, really enjoy. I love uh, your participation and all of that. So today we are going to be talking about the five secrets the diet industry doesn't want us to know. Isn't that so fun? I was actually inspired to do this worksheet uh, workshop because of a coaching call I did last week with one of my clients who is she made some comments about how she felt extremely um, like hoodwinked and railroaded by the diet industry. And as she was talking about that, I was, it was very interesting like to really hear her emotion and like this distrust that comes from the, the diet industry. So it's interesting because I was like, as I was preparing this, I was thinking, it's not like we're like having like these conspiracy theories or anything like that. But truly, there are a lot of misunderstandings and difficulties that, I mean, even me, like I'm going to be 47 on election day. I always love telling people when it's my birthday because who doesn't want to have a, someone say happy birthday to you on your birthday? But so even in my lifetime, there has been so much confusion, like fat free, um, like all of the things. So. Today, we're going to like dispel some of those things. And I'm going to give you some direction and guidance in having to do this. And again, like this is something that is so important to understand and to be open to. So I love that you're here. And as you're here, I want to just remind you to give yourself a lot of love and say, hey, way to go to spend this hour taking care of you. And I, I really want to give like you so much credit and give your, let, let yourself give yourself credit. Okay. And so in order to get the most out of this workshop, I want you to turn off your distractions from your phone, put the little moon sign on there or airplane mode or whatever works for you and just sit and enjoy, relax, have some paper and a pen for sure. You're probably going to want to make some notes and um, we are going to have a great so my name is Dara Thomason, and I am a certified weight and life coach through the Life Coach School. And I do have a full practice. Um, I do have some openings coming up in November. So if you are interested in one-on-one, -on -one, you can talk with me. And I do currently have a group program um, that I'm running that is just starting and um, loving that. So and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, how you can work with me at the end. All right, so let's get really into this um, workshop. workshop. Um, so the five secrets of diet industry doesn't want us to know. So the first one is the myth of calories in and calories out. So it's like eat less, move more. That is one of, that's, that's a very similar idea. And that is something we have heard for many, many years. But the problem is it doesn't work. So there's a couple of reasons why it doesn't work. So in the, um, in the way that, so when we think about, all right, so I'm just going to go through the five and then I'm going to go and dispel them. Okay. So the first one is the calories in calories out also move more, eat less. That is another falsehood. So I'm actually doing six, um, the food guide. So I actually just reviewed the food guides. Um, several and basically how the food guides are they have they say on the base we need to have lots of grains and flours which is the same thing flour grain rice there's a lot of white stuff pasta that was the base and then it had um, the next thing was fruits and vegetables and they had fruits being a, the same amount of fruits as the same amount of vegetables so that's on the food guide and then they have meat and dairy up here. At the very tippy top, they had junk food. 
um, some had fats. So there is this, this triangle saying how much you should eat. And the problem is it's all wrong. So that's why we're unbalanced is because we have the foundation um, not properly allotted for. So that is one of the reasons why we're having problems with weight loss. Um, frequency of eating. So here we go with, if you look at different weight uh, programs, some will say you need to eat little meals like six, eight times a day. Now, I'll, we'll, be talk, we'll be addressing each one of those. Um, then it's complicated. Weight loss is complicated. There's lots of hormones and that's very complicated and difficult. And they want you to think that the only way that you can get any sort of resolution is if you go into a full science lesson and have become a doctor so that you can understand how complicated it all is. So then of course, when this happens, then you have this dependency on them to let you know if, what you can do. Okay, so that kind of leads me into number five is the food plans are designed by experts. So when you have this understanding that the food plans are designed by experts, how do you feel when you're choosing to make a decision for yourself? So that's something to think about. Also, when you are following a food plan and you go on vacation, when you're following a food plan and you go to your mother-in-law's, when you're following a food plan and there's like COVID or something, how do you even know what to do? Like you, right? So these are, so these are the five secrets that the diet industry doesn't want us to know. Okay. So I'm going to share with you what's really going on. Okay. Are you ready? Do you, any, does anyone have any questions about any of these or any comments? So if you have questions or comments, I invite you to just write them in the chat. So the chat box on the bottom, just looks like a little speech bubble um, that you want to contribute. Okay, so I always, I like having the interaction and I welcome you to make any comments while I'm sharing with you, okay? So number one, calories in and calories out. So one of the problems with the calories in and calories out is that not all calories are created equally. What? So if, so if we had a thousand calories of broccoli compared to a thousand calories of potato chips, how do you think those thousand calories are going to process in your body? Now, let me remind you, a calorie is literally just the speed of how something takes, how long something takes to burn. So you can have the calorie of a piece of wood, like a piece of pine is going to be different than a piece like a um, oak or whatever it is, arbutus, right? So we can find the calorie of paper, like how long does paper take to burn? We can find the calorie of glass. It literally is just a count that says how long something is going to take to burn. Interesting, right? So when we look at food, like you compare broccoli to potato chips and it's going into your body, how does your body take, how long does it take for your body to break down broccoli or carrots or rutabaga or celery? or leeks compared to like potato chips or pop or a chocolate bar, right? So if we're thinking, I'm just gonna eat whatever calories and I'm gonna exercise, I'm gonna go on the treadmill and I have my little, you know, pedometer and telling me how many calories I've burned. What do you think the problem is with that? All right, so the other thing to think about is um, so then I said, so calories in, calories out. The other part is that when we, depending on how many calories we actually have already in our body, so I shouldn't say calories, I should say how much energy we already have in our body. So when we eat, we have the insulin takes our energy that we've eaten and it turns it into glycogen. And so glycogen is like the energy that's going through our blood and going all over the place, okay? 
then if we have too much, if we are giving our body too much energy over a period of time and our, our glycogen and everything's in our bloodstream and we're just overloading, overloading, then it's like we have too much going on. We need to start storing some energy. And so when they need to start storing energy, that's fat. Okay. And there's like 3000 to 3,600 calories in one pound of fat. So we are now overloading our system. And so our system's like, oh, we'll just do some storage. So we'll put it in the stomach or I'll put it in the thighs or I'll put it in the wherever. And then when we are eating and when we're like, our body is moving and it needs extra storage, it needs extra energy. Um, it will go to different parts of our body if we don't have all that energy in our bloodstream. Okay. So when I lost 50 pounds without exercising or counting calories, it's because I didn't need to count the calories because I have a lot of extra storage of calories on my body. So what I needed to focus on is I needed to make sure that I wasn't giving my body, first of all, way too much energy. And then secondly, I needed to give it an opportunity to, yes, the, all the glycogen is out of the bloodstream. And so then it goes into the body and starts using the energy that's already being stored. So I call that dining in. So one of the things that I teach, and so I see some of my one-on-one -on -one clients on this call, is there's a difference between the refrigerator and the freezer. So here's the refrigerator. And so that the calories that I was talking about within, within the glycogen, that is easy access calories, right? In the fridge. And so if we just keep giving ourselves like lots and lots of calories, then it'll just keep going to the fridge. But if we can get out the, the glycogen in our bloodstream, our body's like, oh, we need to go to the deep freezer and we need to defrost the meat and all of that. So that's what the body is doing. It's going into our fat stores, the freezer, and it's accessing that. So this is huge. This is amazing. And so that's why one of the things that I recommend as a tool is to do intermittent fasting because we want to give our body a break. We want to use the storage, the glycogen that's, that's running through our blood. And then when that's all been used up and it says, oh, I know what I can do. I can get some storage from the arm or from the bum or from wherever. This is amazing. Okay. So this is super, super helpful. And so the weight loss industry doesn't want us to know this because they want us to keep being dependent on buying their things. I know every time I say it, I'm like, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I know I'm not, but it is interesting because um, I do highly recommend Jason Fung's book. Um, this is an amazing book. He also has written the obesity code, but one of the things that he talks about is that um, the medical school at the University of Toronto is funded by Pepsi. So he does say, like, we do need to be careful because there are agendas. Okay, so that leads me perfectly into the food guide. So in 1976, I'm pretty sure, um, the American food guide was changed to having a lot of white on the bottom and then fruits and vegetables being the same amount. And then we have the meat um, and protein, yeah, meat and dairy, uh, then, and then we have like junk, which is interesting that that's on there. Okay, so the other thing that happened when they changed the food guide is we started introducing a lot of snack bars and processed foods that can just be packaged, easily stored, they can be on, they have long shelf lives and they have factories and people are working in them. So when I was a kid, we didn't really have snacks so much. And I think before 1977, a lot of people, and you can, you can share with me on, on the chat if you want about um, like when you were, when you were growing up, did your parents say, okay, we're not going to snack. We are going to ruin your dinner. So my parents would say that to me, you're going to ruin your dinner. 
And so one of the problems with snacking all the time and eating a lot of, so when we have the white stuff, like the flour and rice and those kinds of things on the bottom is that those, those process really quickly in your body. And so you're actually going to be very hungry. So if you take, um, if you look at a bag of wheat compared to a bag of flour, it's very different. If you have a handful of wheat in your hand, that's like substantial, you can see it. But if you had flour, you could blow and it'd go all over the place. So they take, they process all of these, this, this wheat, like they take out the protein and all of those things and put it in this form that just like quickly saturates through your body, okay? So then you're not satiated, right? You don't have that same level of satiation in your stomach from eating that food. And so it's like, it burns really quickly and you need to have more, okay? Now, so that's part of the problem with that, the base of the food guide. And then you've got the fruit and vegetables. Again, not all calories are created equally. And yes, fruit is wonderful, but it does have a lot of natural sugars in it. So if you're already having a lot of bread and a lot of refined flours and rice and those kinds of things, and you're not really having a lot of satiation, and then you're topping that off with a lot of fruit, which is naturally occurring sugar, and you're not having as many vegetables, and then you don't have hardly any meats and um, dairy, what's happening to our body? Our body is just needing to eat and eat meat so much because it's not really feeling full. And so we're just giving it a lot of empty um, energy and we're not really treating ourselves properly. So if I was to build, rebuild the food guide, I would really want to have a lot of good proteins and I do, and our bodies do need carbs, absolutely. Carbs are energy, but I'm wanting to have carbs that I, it's gonna take time for my body to break down. Like think about that, the difference between a cracker and cauliflower or carrot or broccoli or whatever that is. Your body is processing and, and doing all the things that it needs to do to use those really good carbs for you, okay? So any questions, you can just put them in the chat. So now we go into this frequency of eating. And one of the problems with the frequency of eating is every time we eat food, this is not a problem, this is how the body works. So every time we eat food, our insulin is like, oh, we have some energy, wonderful, let's, let's go. We've gotta go and process all this energy. So our insulin kicks into gear and I think of insulin like a, a train and it's going into gear and it's like, okay, we're gonna, process all of this um, energy. We're gonna put it in our cars. You know, the train has the cars and, and then we're gonna go throughout the body and we're gonna distribute all the energy to all the body parts. And you remember like we have this um, metabolic basal rate, uh, sorry, basal, basal metabolic rate. So our eyes need energy like for blinking and our lungs for breathing and all of that. So we do need a certain amount of energy every day just to keep the body moving, right? So this is interesting. So we will just, the, the train needs to go and deliver all this energy for us. But every time we eat, even if it's good food, we are raising the insulin levels. And so one of the reasons why we, there's talk about this and, and my, so my, I have a sister who loves to work out. She's like, I, I was gonna say obsessed. She loves to work out. She's really interested by it. It was, it's really important to her. And um, so she, because she builds a lot of muscle and burns a lot of muscle, she does eat three or four times a day, which is totally fine. Five times a day sometimes. And that's really important. But if you're not building a lot of muscle, uh, three times is totally adequate. And a lot of my clients they are ending up um, eating only once a day. They, they don't really have the hunger. Um, one of my clients today, she's at 30 pounds and today is week 12. And she is finding that she's actually not hungry during the day. And people can kind of get confused by that. But when you think about it, and by the way, she is now wearing a size 12 pant. It, they're, they're comfortable. So it's really exciting to watch her um, decrease in her size and in her confidence 
but the, one of the reasons she doesn't need to be eating so frequently is because she's, her body is literally dining in. It is using all of that extra storage that she has been um, holding on to. And it was super interesting because last week I said, you know, those huge bags of flour, you used to be carrying a 30 pound bag of flour with you everywhere you went. And so you can imagine how much more her knees and her ankles and her uh, hips and all her body parts are feeling so much better. She's having so much more energy because she's not carrying around these 30 pounds everywhere she goes. It's really, really exciting. And so when we think about the frequency of eating, I recommend to when you're first, first starting out with working with me is that we're just going to eat three meals a day. That's it. We're not going to have any snacking. And then we're going to work our way up to potentially like this one client of mine who I just see she's on here um, to one meal a day. And she's totally fine. And sometimes she changes that up. Sometimes like she might have two meals or mostly it's one meal and, but she can change her time that she's eating. Okay. So if anyone has any questions about any of that, just please put it in the chat. I'd love to answer any of your questions. So I really want you to think about this um, concept for yourself and what's coming up for you with that, because this is a really good opportunity to see what's, what's happening. Now, the other thing to think about is if, if you need to be eating more food, then of course um, you're consuming more food, you're purchasing more food, you're spending a lot of time focusing on the food and you're not as um, present with yourself and enjoying the kind of life and creating the kind of life that you want for yourself. So that's interesting too. Okay, so now this one's gonna be very interesting for you. And um, so for my Jan, so in February, so I have um, my one-on-one -on -one clients and I just decided we're going to do a deeper dive into hormones and I will be doing some more um, webinars about that. But something that's really interesting about uh, hormones and especially for us who are, well, I'm entering into menopause. So I've got those pre-menopausal kinds of things going on. And there's some of you who are already, you're maybe going through menopause, who have finished menopause, all of that. Um, uh, there are different hormones that are affected with it. So I do, I'm just going to give you just a little bit of information about that, that I thought was very interesting is that when we have, so for, say for example, um, we have progesterone. So progesterone was, is released when our eggs are released every month. And so it does affect um, how we feel. And so one of the things that can happen when you have your, you know, you have your period is that it raises our hunger. And so a lot of us will want to eat more chocolate or things like that. And so um, we've got to think about, and then we have the estrogen, the estrogen levels go up and that is released from our ovaries. And one of the things that's really great about estrogen is that it helps increase our breast tissue and it helps widen our hips, which is great for baby making. Now, I do want to remind us that our bodies are made to make babies. And so uh, women, they are more prone to building fat because the more fat we are, the better we are at feeding babies and making babies, right? Whereas men, they are for muscle. So the muscle, they are, it's easier, they're prone to, are built to, to, be, mil, yeah, to build muscle because they need to go and walk and walk and walk. This, remember, we're primitive. Uh, we're wired for this survival. They need to walk and walk and walk and have this muscle and fight beasts and carry beasts home so that we could have the meat and we could have all, all of the, the benefits of that. So we are just literally wired differently. And when we can understand that better, then we can then stop being mad. Because how often he's like, well, my husband, he just decides to lose weight. And he's like, he goes, he loses it so quickly. Well, because he has more muscle. And when you have more muscle, you can burn fat faster. It's just a fact. It's just the way things are. 
So it's interesting, but remember, like, but estrogen also is really helpful because it prevents bone loss. It enhances brain function. It regulates and works our leptin. So, and there are, so for when I teach about weight loss, there's actually only three hormones that are super, super important to understand weight loss. And it's leptin tells us when we're full, ghrelin tells us when we're hungry, and insulin is what carries, it processes all the, the sugars and everything, and it takes and it delivers all of the energy that we need in our body. So even just knowing that information is super, super important. And then the rest, so, so fun things like estrogen and progesterone, progesterone, testosterone, um, those things are really just more information and they can be really helpful. So the other thing that I wanted to just mention about when the, when the science says it's complicated, um, we don't have to make things complicated. We can, we can understand things. And so what I like to tell people is when our, so our body is a bunch of different systems, right? We have like respiratory, we have our, you know, kidneys and we have our uh, digestion, just digestion. We have all of these functions. So if one part is not going very well, then the body's like, Oh, wait a minute. Um, we're having some problems here. So it'll kind of start shutting down and go more into preservation mode and then things don't work as properly. And so we need to really um, work on connecting our brain with our body. And so we can just be more in tune with our body and then we can know how to help it. So that's just, it's, it's really interesting because if we feel like it's just too complicated and it's so hard and uh, this is just how my mother was and we don't really just study it and learn things for ourselves, then we become very disempowered and then we don't take action. And we don't go to YouTube or we don't go to the library. We don't go and get like, talk to me or someone else about, well, what is really going on? Or go to the doctors and getting like some, some tests on what your levels are, all of that. It's really, really interesting. So I just want you to know that I have lost 50 pounds and I help clients lose weight every day. And I literally have three hormones that I worry about. I not, not worry, but I know about. So insulin, I understand how insulin works. Leptin tells me when I'm full. And in order to have my insulin working properly, I don't want to have a lot of extra sugar and flour going through my body. And then ghrelin, I actually learn what it actually feels like to be hungry and learn to listen and honor my body. So there are some fun things like progesterone and estrogen and testosterone and, and those and thyroid, we could talk about thyroid, those kinds of things. But really, truly, my main thing is insulin, test, um, leptin and ghrelin. And uh, that's how I've lost the weight. And that's how I left, left uh, my, help my clients lose the weight. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It really doesn't. Okay. And then the last one is food plans are designed by experts. Now, when you think about that, that when you can only eat what someone tells you to eat, but you go on vacation, and now you don't have all the things in your fridge because you don't have a fridge. You're on the road. You're going to fast food restaurants or you're going to the grocery store. You don't have a refrigerator. And the person tells you, you need to eat at this time and you need to eat these things. How does that make you feel? You're so disempowered, aren't you? You're not really understanding why the expert said, eat this, eat that, eat this, eat that. Like if, there's, if they say, Hey, you need to eat this. Let's say, for example, if you're going to have an apple, it's like, Oh, if you're going to have an apple, it's a good idea to have some, um, some sort of fat with it. And then they can explain that we have, you know, the apple has natural fruits. And if you compare it with uh, protein, that's going to reduce the fruit. Um, cinnamon has a natural suppressant in it. 
And so if you want to have something like a banana, which is pretty high in sugar, if you pair that with some cinnamon, then that's going to help reduce the, the sugar spike that's going to happen when you have banana. But if you don't understand how that kind of works and you're on vacation or your mother-in-laws or somewhere and you don't have all the food that you normally have, then you aren't empowered anymore to know, to make good decisions. So then you feel so overwhelmed. You're like, bah, forget it. It's too much. I don't want to go there. So let's just review this. And if anyone has any questions about these, please let me know. So calories in, calories out. This does not work because not A, not all calories are created equally and B, our body processes calories in different ways. So if we are giving our body a whole bunch of um, refined flour and sugar um, and we never actually ever have to go, that's from the fridge, if we never have to go to the freezer, then we're never accessing the stored fat. That 30 pounds, right? My client has been, had been carrying around with her. You never learn to access the storage and you're always giving yourself more and more storage. So that doesn't work. Okay. And then the other, I didn't really address the, the app when you, uh, when you move more and you eat less, one of the problems. And so in fact, it's, it's addressed here in Jason Fung's book about the biggest loser. Remember that show, the biggest loser and how those people, um, all but one, he said, have put the weight back on because they're, they don't understand like how our body processes the energy. And so when our metabolism is, is it affected all of that, then we aren't going to be able to sustain that weight loss. Okay. And there's like an internal thermometer and all of those things. So I go into that in my one-on-one -on -one coaching and in my group coaching. So the food guide, the reason we're having all the problems is because it's off balanced and we aren't having a good foundation of the food that we're eating. Um, the frequency of eating, every time we eat, we spike our insulin, whether it's good food or bad. Um, complicated hormones, it doesn't have to be complicated. We have insulin, leptin, and ghrelin. Yes, there's estrogen and progesterone and testosterone and thyroid and all of that, but those actually aren't super, super important. And if you just focus on those main three, then you can, you can have the same success that I have and that my clients have, which is super awesome. And then we have the food, the food plans are designed by experts. So when we are reliant on other people telling us what to eat and not why, then when we have situations like going on vacation, we aren't capable or not able to, um, to make those decisions for ourselves. So I never, other than my five day training that I did with um, this past summer, I don't normally give food plans to people. The purpose of me doing that was so that you could see where the excuses were. But generally speaking, I never tell my clients what to eat and how to eat. I'll give them suggestions, but I always explain why I have those, those things. All right. Does anyone have any questions about these five secrets? So now you have five secrets that you know the answer for, and you actually understand what's really going on. So cool. All right. You can ask any question throughout. So I'm just going to review quickly. Um, one of the ways that if you, if you found this interesting, if you liked um, what I was saying, I want you to think about this. So this is my love yourself thin program. So the first part of my program is the weight loss science is simple. And so I walk you through how simple and so some of the things that I taught today um, to debunk what was going on with the diet industry and they don't want us to understand, I talk about those things in my program. And so we have four lessons that really work on understanding what's really going on. Um, and then I talk about how emotions are the key to the universe. And so we really delve in on how to connect our brain with our body. And then I teach you how to create a future you who you really like being. And so like even today, I'll give an example as with the client and I said, Hey, let's talk about Christmas. Let's talk about like things that we can do to 
be your future self, your best future self at Christmas. And we talk about making goals and obstacles and strategies and all those things to really help people um, getting the kind of results that they really want. So this, these are the pillars of my program. So why don't diets work? We talk a lot about that. And I want you to think about that. Why don't diets work? And it kind of goes along with the fifth part of today's training was that if you are relying on experts to tell you what to eat all the time, you become so disempowered that you never truly embrace your own genius that you have and that you embrace like your body. Like I'm six feet tall. And so what I'm going to eat and how much I eat and the level of my own physical activity, all of that is going to be very different from someone who's five foot three. Right. And so then we talk about what is the role of food in your life? So one of the things that I'm just going to share, if you feel like your food needs to be exciting, let's, let's decide now, like food is good and I love food and we can be foodies and we can appreciate food. But if food is the only thing you're looking forward to in your life, you need to find more things to do in your life. That's more exciting. I'm just to say it straight how it is. So let's start having joy, joy in our life that has nothing to do with food. Because really the role of food is to give us nutrients and minerals to build our strong bones and muscles and give us fuel. That's what food is for. Okay. Um, so what is the role of food? And so we talk about our brain and how important it is to make this connection. Brain meets body. Right? So we need to really connect our brain with our body and, and getting the whole approach to all of it. So how often do we talk about having comfort food? So what does that even mean, right? Because the food doesn't talk to you if you're lonely and says, oh, hi, hi there, how are you? Or if you're bored, the food doesn't provide uh, entertainment. Food gives us nutrients. Food gives us minerals, food gives us power and energy. That's what food does, okay? So if we're bored or lonely or sad or discouraged, all the food is gonna do is give us more calories and more energy. They're just gonna keep putting more glycogen in our bloodstream and we're still gonna be bored and we're still gonna be angry or whatever it is. And then we're actually never solving for the problem that we have. Okay. So that is why we really learn about our mindset. So here are the examples. So these are the lessons. So the first one is, so for the first section, weight loss is simple. So we have the science lesson, the food science in the kitchen sink. So that's talking about, you know, going to the fridge rather than the freezer creating your own protocol. We're going to learn how to create our very own way of eating. So some of my one-on-one -on -one clients, they have, and the beautiful thing is that all their protocols are different. I don't even know all the things that they do for the protocol, what they're eating and how they're doing it, uh, which is fine because we're just getting the results because they are applying the weight loss science. They are applying the mind tools and they are creating the results for themselves. So and then we talk about asset protection. So emotions are the key to the universe. So we're going to learn about the power of our thoughts, my very favorite tool. And by the way, if anyone wants to be coached at the end of the call, you can put your raise your hand and I can coach you. And you can see how I use this model. Um, the higher brain and lower brain, we learn all about that. Um, emotions, overcoming emotional roadblocks. This is probably one of my favorites. The triple P, perfectionism procrastination and people pleasing. And then in the third section, create the future whom you love being. So we have a lesson on back to the future. How do I love thee? If I write it, it will come. And then building trust and commitment to you, your future self. So even though it started this week, I still have openings for you because I made a quilt of 30 pieces and I need to have 10 more people to join the group because I need to finish off the quilt. So we meet every Monday and Wednesday at 11 o'clock Pacific. And I teach. And so it's interactive. So you can like, 
like have different interactions with me while I'm teaching. And then we coach and it's amazing. Either you get coached or you watch other people being coached and it, it really does change how you think. Um, now we also have a private Facebook group and right now it's super fun in there because people are taking on this challenge I gave them and it's something that they've never done before or probably a lot of them have never done before and so they're they're working it out together and then you ask me questions I did not realize when I said this that there is a I think she's Chinese or Korean Korean Japanese I don't, I, uh, but she's a, a rock star and so when I, I did the hash hashtag Astera she's on there too when I did this main search but you can just do Astera and um, I will find your question and interact with you so I'm in there five days a week contributing and making comments uh, so all the classes and the coaching will be recorded and uh, in fact I just hired someone yesterday and she is taking them all and she's putting it on a playlist and so they will be um, in there. And then she also is having a playlist. You get access to all my free trainings. It's like the Netflix of uh, me, of all the trainings that I've been doing over the last two months or so. And so you can just, it's super easy. And then you can have all of my trainings on there. All right. So what you get, so I've got the done free. So I have the templates and the worksheets and they're so beautiful. Um, interactive lesson with me. So that's a $3,000 bonus. So the program itself is $2,000. And then um, interactive lesson with me. And then you will get one module a week because I want you to stay focused. So I've got a bunch of bonuses. Um, so I have the weekly live support office hours for coaching. So $4,000, the private Facebook group, $4,000. And then after um, the, we go together, um, after you have finished with me, oh, whoops, then uh, you get once a month, you get a coaching call, a group coaching call with me, which is super fun. I'm afraid to ask my spouse for $2,000 just to give up on another program. Oh, that's so interesting, Lisa. I wish you would have been there yesterday when I coached that lady on my group. I say that lady because I don't want to share any names. Um, but she had a lot of concerns of signing up and basically her model was yeah so you get it, it's like a twelve thousand dollar program bonus for two thousand so in fact so i will show you this was her model uh her thought was so the circumstances group coaching program the thought is i don't like people telling me what to do and when she had that thought she felt rebellious and when she felt rebellious, she's like, screw you. I'm going to do whatever I want. She's going to eat whatever she wants. And she's going to spend more money on things like extra fabric and things that she doesn't really need. Um, and then the, the result was stay stuck and make no progress. So I want you to think about your experience in the past and the like, so for example, you saying, I'm afraid to ask my spouse for $2,000 just to give up on another program. So what you're doing right now is you're going to your past self to find an answer for your future. So the problem is if I said to you when you were like five, I'm like, hey, can you tie your shoes? You're like, no, because you never learned how to tie your shoes before you were five. You're like, I've never been able to do it before. So we didn't say, oh, okay, that's fine. You don't need to learn to tie your shoes. You're like, oh, it's okay. I'll teach you how to tie your shoes and we'll practice and, and you'll get good at it. Don't worry, I'll, I'll just walk you through. And you had this trust because it's like, oh, I guess she's tied her shoes. She knows what she's doing. And so she'll help me. And so this is something, so when we were learning how to do things when we were kids, it just seemed like natural, like, oh, I'm just gonna learn some things and I'm gonna fail a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna learn as I go right? But now if we kind of forgot that the way to we learn things and the way we have progress is through some difficulty and then we just get to keep picking up. So one of the things that I find a lot of my clients, I attract a lot of perfectionists because I'm actually the president of the perfection recovery program. And so a lot of us become perfectionists because we want to avoid difficulty 
Uh, a lot of us are perfectionists because we want, it's, a, it's actually a, a self-preservation in a lot of ways. Um, but when a perfectionist does something that doesn't turn out the way they wanted, they make it mean that they are a failure, that they are terrible, rather than a non-perfectionist is like, oh, I tried this thing. I thought it was going to work this way, but apparently I need to tweak this or tweak that. And so they just think of it as a learning curve. So the reason I share this is that when we invest in a program, which is a big investment, I, I, I hear you, $2,000. But if we're going into that investment thinking, I'm uh, having that fear, and the thought is, I'm just going to give up on another program, you have that thought, and then you have the fear, the action is, maybe try the program kind of like this, but not have that success. So the interesting part was when I did the model with her in a different way. So we still have the same um, circumstance of group coaching program, but then I asked her, how do you want to feel about the group pro coaching program? She said, I want to feel relaxed. I said, okay. So how does relaxed look? And she had a hard time really thinking about what does relaxed look like? So she's like, well, I guess I could uh, read other people's comments in the Facebook group and I could make comments on it and I could laugh with them and I could um, have some fun. I could just print off sheets. I can do that. Like I can do that. I can get that ready for the, the class. Um, I could read other people's posts and I could feel like I belong. Like, oh, you know, I'm here. Um, okay. I suffer from depression and tend to hide, completely fall off the map. Yeah, right. Interesting. So that is something also to think about. It's like, I've had a tendency in the past to have some depression. Okay. So that's, so when you have that thought, I, so even there, I suffer from depression and tend to hide. So when you have that thought, how do you feel, Lisa? What is that emotion? When you have the thought, I suffer from depression and tend to hide. What's that feeling? Hopeless, right? So when you feel hopeless, out of hopeless, so the fuel, the feeling is always our fuel. It's always what's gonna lead us into action. So being hopeless, what kinds of actions do you take? Do you go into the Facebook group? Do you participate in the class? Do you print off the sheets and do your homework? Probably not, some hopelessness. So this is really interesting. So I, I, even though I don't have her on the screen, everyone who's watching, I really want you to think about what's going on here for her. And I'm really grateful for you, Lisa, for putting your hand up and, and, and saying these things. And if you want to come on the screen, you totally can. You just put your, you raise your hand and I can bring you on. Um, so when you feel hopeless, what kinds of actions do you take? And all of you think about that for yourself. When you feel like it's totally not a chance, never going to happen, you're just completely deflated, what actions do you take? And then, of course, those actions give, lead you to the result that you're having. And the result, so if you have, I suffer from depression and tend to hide, so then you feel hopeless. And so when you're hopeless, you don't participate in the class, you don't do the worksheets, you don't um, go into the Facebook page very often, you don't really interact with people. What is the result of all of that? You tend to go back into a depression because you didn't give yourself the opportunity to learn and grow, okay? So the way that we can work through this that's right, it's a vicious cycle. So the way that we work through this is we just give ourselves permission to feel hopeless. 
This is how we stop the cycle. So in your body, I want all of you to think about a time when you felt really hopeless in your life. Now, a vibration, a feeling is literally just a vibration in our body. It really is. And so, um, and it's actually very, very helpful to have emotions. And it's really, really helpful to have these vibrations. Because if we had some crazy guy walking beside us or like behind us or something, we're going to have fear. And fear is great because it's like high alert. It's going to help us to get to safety so that we aren't going to get whatever could happen to us from this crazy man, right? And it's good to feel um, love because when we have that vibration of love in our body and our baby wakes up at three in the morning and we're so cozy in our bed and we don't want to get out of bed, we have such an attachment. We have so much love for this baby that we're like, okay, baby, I love you. Take off the covers, go out, take care of the baby, right? So emotions are really important and emotions are very good for us. But what happens is if we are avoiding and resisting emotions, then we're not allowing them to be in our body. And in fact, it's kind of like a pop bottle. The more you avoid and resist, it's like you're shaking it up. You're just shaking it and shaking it. And what happens, right? It just builds and builds and builds. And then we just kind of pop, right? So instead of our life being a balance of 50% good and 50% bad, if we're avoiding and resisting that 50% bad and we're shaking up that pop bottle. So now our life is really unbalanced because we have 75% bad because we're not even giving ourselves the opportunity to have any of the good. So when we feel hopelessness in our body, where is that? Do we feel heavier? Do we feel like downtrodden? Like where is it in our body? Do we have like this really heavy um, knot in our stomach? Do we have a tightness in our chest? Like a, um, I often feel um, like a very, almost like an elephant is on my chest. It's, it's on me, okay? I want all of us to think about that. And when we have that discomfort of that negative emotion of, I mean, really we call it a negative emotion, but really it's just an emotion and it's just there to help us. I just want you to sit with that feeling and take some breaths in that feeling and just give yourself a moment to say, this is just me feeling this emotion. And we don't fight it. We don't push it away. We just let ourselves be with that emotion. And I often say to myself, welcome to being a human. This is just me being a human. Okay. And then it passes. And then we're now grounded. And now we can use our higher brain and we can think about what we really want. Another thing that happens to a lot of us is that we will have this gut reaction. We're like, oh, like the things that Dara is saying, that this makes so much sense. I've never heard it this way, all of that. And it's like, I want to have that result. I want to be like, I want to have the same story as Dara had, like losing 50 pounds, keeping it off and not having to count calories and exercise. That, that sounds amazing. But then we have this little niggly niggly, the back of our head, like, what are you thinking? You failed in the past. What's wrong with you? Don't you know? Okay. Right. Anyone else have any other questions or want coaching? I have five minutes. Okay. So I'll just finish this model because it's super interesting. So she has the same circumstance of the group coaching program, but then we said she wanted to feel relaxed about it. 
And when she felt relaxed, so we talked about all the different things. Oh, is individual coaching also a 12 week program? Oh, good question. So I sign up. Uh, yes, I can do a minimum of three months to six months. And then if people after six months want to renew, they can. So if you are interested in the one-on-one -on -one coaching program, um, we can just uh, make a consult, Julie, and we can talk about that. Good question. Okay. And for some of the, the people in the group program, if they wanted to also have one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, that would be an option in November. I have, I believe I have three spots opening in November. So that is an option for you. All right. So then she had the feeling of relax. So she did all of these actions and this is the result. That's so beautiful. It's success in the program because she had the thought I did this. And when she takes that ownership, I did this. No one is because remember her last model was like, I don't want people telling me what to do. She's deciding for herself. She's creating that own result. She's making it happen for her. And I'm not having to tell her what to do because what happened in this model here, which was super interesting was it made, so she, when she isn't, she doesn't want people telling her what to do. She's feeling really stuck, like she's unempowered. So she's stuck in a corner. She felt like a victim. And so if you're a victim, guess what? You have to have a villain. So guess who was the villain? Me. I was the villain because I'm the weight loss coach saying, do this, do that, do this, do that. Interesting, right? So of course we're not gonna have success if we're feeling like the victim. Makes sense, right? So then when we can just feel relaxed and we can feel like we have the choice so that's why I don't write food plans. That's why I don't do those things. It's because you need to be empowered for yourself. Right? So food plans designed by experts. You're going to become your own expert. How fun is that? You don't have to get all complicated by hormones. We just need to know three of them. How fun is that? You can just eat when you're truly hungry and you can use all the storage that your body has. How amazing is that, right? The food guide is like, that doesn't work for me. Rice cakes, eh -eh. flour, that, that increases my, spikes my insulin and gives me way too much glycogen. That's no good, right? And then calories in and calories out, it's like, oh, difference between the fridge and the freezer. How cool. Okay. It was so awesome to have all of you come. And if anyone has suggestions of free trainings that they would like me to share, I'm always open to new ones. I always have lots of wonderful ideas, but if I can help you solve a specific problem, I love doing that. And I love being able to share these with you every Thursday. And if you know of someone else that would benefit from these um, webinars, please like, let them know that I'm here. So again, I am Dara Thomason. I'm a life coach for quilters. I help quilters lose weight and find more joy in their life. All right, everyone take care. Bye-bye.